The Maya interface can be a little bit intimidating when you first start. Let's break it down. Okay, let's get to know this interface. How I want to approach learning the interface is I want to give you guys an overview of it to understand what makes up the interface. And then I want us to move forward, start making things, and we'll learn the tools just by using them. So let's get started. When you first open up Maya, you'll be greeted with this window. And this window is just highlighting what's new in Maya. We can close it by pressing the OK button with the left mouse button. The Maya user interface is made up of menu bars, toolbars, panels, and windows. And these panels and windows and bars contain elements or tools to help us with our creation process. We're currently in the Maya Classic Workspace. You can see it up here in the upper right corner. And in the Classic Workspace, you have something called the viewport. And the viewport is this window in the center of the screen. So let's learn about the viewport and viewport navigation. The viewport window is your work area. It's where we do our modeling and setting up and moving the objects around. To understand how to navigate around the viewport, let's first put in an object to use as a reference. So go up here where it says poly modeling and underneath you'll notice there's a few icons. Each of those represents a primitive shape of some sort. So choose the cube-like shape. Maya will place a cube in the scene. So the cube is at the center of the window and I wanna get a better look at it. So to move the camera closer to the cube, I can use the middle mouse wheel. So when you scroll the middle mouse wheel, you can get closer to the object and scrolling in the opposite direction will bring the camera away. It moves it through a, a incremental steps. Now, when you're further away, you can also get closer to the object quickly, and that's by pressing the F key. And the F key on the keyboard frames in on your object. So press it now, and you'll see the camera snaps in on the object and focuses it. Um, let's scroll out a little bit. The rest of the controls for viewport navigation are done with a combination of the Alt key and one of the mouse buttons and then you need to drag. So let's do that now. Hold down Alt plus the left mouse button and drag on the viewport and you'll rotate the camera around the scene. While you're framed in on the object, when you do this, it actually orbits around the object as well. So that's very useful for getting different views of the object. Next, if when you hold down Alt plus the middle mouse button and drag, you'll pan around the scene and this allows you to move the view um, past this window. Finally, when you hold Alt plus the right mouse button and drag on the viewport, you'll move the camera smoothly um, closer and further away. Um, this is similar to dollying. So some people refer to dollying, which is a film term where the camera is on wheels. So it, I call it a smooth zoom. Right? So get to know these controls. Let's review them real quick. Uh, middle mouse wheel, scrolling, we'll do a snap kind of zoom. F frames in on the object. Alt plus the left mouse button and drag will rotate your view. Alt plus the middle mouse button and drag will pan your view. And finally, Alt plus the right mouse button and drag will do a smooth zoom. And that's essentially how you navigate around the viewport. Now let's take a look at the rest of the interface. At the top of the interface, you have a menu bar and the menu bar contains some tabs related to your current workflow. Right now we're in the modeling workflow. And if you open up one of the tabs, say the mesh tab, you'll see some tools. And these tools are related to modeling. The same goes for edit mesh, mesh tools, right? Now you can change your workflow type. So right beside modeling, if you open up the drop down that arrow there, you can see that there's rigging, animation, effects, and rendering. Let's choose rigging. When you choose rigging, these tabs here now have changed. And if you open them up, 
the tools have changed as well. So that's very useful for changing your workflow type. For now, let's change back to modeling. Underneath the top bar, you have a secondary bar, and that contains some snapping and rendering options, as well as the ability to turn symmetry on or off. Underneath the secondary bar, we have what Maya calls the shelf. So the shelf is a collection of tools related to a specific work type. So right now we're under poly modeling, and so we have modeling tools. And if you go across the tabs, there's sculpting, rigging, animation, and you can see the tool set changes as you choose those tabs. Let's go back to poly modeling. Underneath the shelf, we have what I call the shading and rendering bar. And the shading and rendering bar has options to customize the look of your viewport. You can do things such as turning wireframe on or off, turning lights on or off, or turning on x-ray mode. At the bottom of the interface, we have a time slider and a range slider, and those are for animation. Underneath that, we have a command bar, and that's for scripting, so you can load up scripts or write your own scripts. At the very bottom, we have a help bar, which contains a, a tip that changes depending on what your mouse is hovered over. On the left side of the interface, we have the toolbox. So the toolbox contains your selection tools as well as your transformation tools. Underneath those, we have your panel views. So right now, we're in a single panel view. And if you choose the second icon, it'll go to the four panel view. Underneath that is a two panel split view. The very last icon is what we call the outliner. So click on that and it opens up your outliner. And your outliner contains all the objects in your scene. Let's close the outliner again by clicking on it. And let's go back to the single panel view by clicking on the top icon. On the right side of the interface, we have some panels that are docked. And these panels can open and close when you press on them, right? The top panel is what we call the channel box. And if you select your cube again, the channel box contains properties of the current object you have selected and any changes you've made to it. Underneath the channel box, we have the modeling toolkit, which contains some selection options, tool options, and also transform tool options if they're selected. Finally, the very bottom panel is the attribute editor, and that contains the attributes of your current object. I'm gonna close the attribute editor by pressing on it. Yeah, so that's our interface in a nutshell. And to wrap up the tutorial, I wanna mention that you can customize your interface quite a bit. Uh, there's options up here under Windows, Settings and Preferences, and you can do things such as change the plugins, change the color settings, um, adjust hotkeys, and a um, bunch of preferences. I have a separate video where I've customized my interface to make it easier to work and pleasing to look at. If you're interested, check that out. Or if your interface ever goes buggy, I show you how to reset your preferences there as well. Well, that wraps up our overview of the interface. I hope that helped you guys out. Um, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to get all of the latest content. Helps this channel out a lot. And we'll see you in the next one.